Please be seated. Good evening. Good evening. Early announcements from the congregation at this time. Let's continue with the prayer of the day. Look kindly, Lord, we pray on the devotion of your people, that those who by self-denial are restrained in body, may the fruit of good works be renewed in mind. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Lord, in your mercy. The Wednesdays of Lent take on a more penitential tone. Our longing intensifies. We know we have to work hard to resist temptation and to change some of our bad habits. We know that spiritual renewal won't come easy, but we know that we all, all, all will ultimately be able to do what will, what will come from God's inspiration as a gift. So we ask from a deeper and deeper place in our hearts. We listened to the wonderful children's story about Nineveh. They responded to God's word and repented. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled. O oh God, you will not spurn. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed be God, the giver of salvation, who decreed that mankind should become a new creation in himself, when all would be made new. With great confidence, let us ask him, Lord, renew us in your spirit. Lord, you promise a new heaven and a new earth. Renew us daily through, this, through your spirit that we may enjoy your presence forever in the heavenly Jerusalem. Help us to work with you to make this world alive with your spirit and to build on earth a city of justice, love, and peace. Free us from all negligence and sloth and give us joy in, the, in your gifts of grace. Deliver us from evil and from slavery to the senses which binds us to goodness. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we know that you receive what is in our heart. Let us be inspired by your words and by the actions of your son, Jesus. Guide us to make sacrifices this Lent in the spirit of self-denial and with greater attention to you <clears throat> and to those around us. Help us to believe that you will grant us this because of the sacrifice Jesus made for us. May the Lord bless us and protect us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. This evening's text is from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the reckoning, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But that same servant, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow servants who owed him a <clears throat> hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and besought him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison till he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to the Lord all that had, been take, that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you besought me. And should you not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord delivered him to the jailers till he should pay all his debt. So also may my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord.
Thank you. Would you like to preach? <laughs> you will be preaching soon. And I had a little bit of an insight from you about what you're preaching on, and it sounds very challenging. Our focus has been the Lord's Prayer and what are we going to be challenged by in the Lord's Prayer. We, I think, have begun to see that the Lord's Prayer is not just to be prayed as a group of people in a congregation, but actually also prayed by individuals like here at any time. And so I suggest that you use the, the Lord's Prayer which actually was, was developed by Jesus in order for us to really understand what God is doing in our lives. And so if we take that notion that God is going to reveal himself, which is what we've been talking about in the past, then we can also begin to see that the Lord's Prayer is a prayer that will help us to actually understand where we're coming from and where God is coming from in our lives. And so having prayed the Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then we come all the way down to give us our bread. And then we come down to the statement that says, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for the, the uh, the sins, and sometimes it's trespasses, forgive us our trespasses and our sins. And that's where we're going to start today, give us our trespass. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with us in a way that can only be directed by you. Help us not to think that we can manage life on ourselves, even though the world encourages us to actually try to run our lives. The reality is that again and again and again in Scripture, we are advised that when we try to run and run our lives, it will not work out. And so, Lord, as we together pray, the prayer that you've taught us. Help us, Lord, to be the type of disciple that you are making in each one of us. Amen. Some time ago, I discovered that it's much more difficult to remember your sermons than, you, and, than at other times. For instance, let me sort of drop down to several level, levels and we'll find out, I found out that I had a difficult time remembering my own sermons. And uh, for example, I have a study and it's relaxing. I have one of those big boy chairs and, and uh, wow, I was gonna listen to my sermon. And halfway through I, I slept and uh, I began to empathize with the people who uh, aren't really into memorizing, although some people are. And in the chapter that we've just read, that. Uh, David has just read, 
we find an example of how easy it is for you and for me to look over and to escape, try to escape from the messages that we have. And one of the ways in which we try to escape is not to memorize, is not to read, is not to listen to others who may join with us in prayer. I invite, on behalf of David and myself, I invite any of you to join us on Tuesday evenings for prayer. Now maybe you say that's enough, we don't really need to do that. Well, do you really need to? Now I'm not suggesting that you're not praying, but what I am suggesting is that we can always pray more, regardless of where we are in our prayer lives. So as we begin to look at this chapter, we find, for example, a very interesting development in the scripture. And the development is very easy to, hunt and di to understand, but very difficult to carry out. You see, what I'm suggesting is that you and I, as we go through our spiritual life, or to remember some things. And first of all, what I want to suggest to you is that Jesus himself, in a very similar way, actually held us accountable. You see, in this particular day and age, it's easy for us to say this and that and, and sort of poo-poo the idea of prayer. I've never seen a prayer answered. Or some people say, I have always seen my prayer answered. And so it goes and goes. But we're, today we are focusing on how you and I are evil. Now, you might not like that. Because the world's perspective is for you and I to declare one another, you're okay, I'm okay. That was a book not too long ago that actually pushed that idea that you and I are okay, we don't really need to change. We can just do more of what we have been doing. And one way that we can challenge that is an example from Stalin, which I recently read again because of uh, the conflagration of, that we have going on right now in Ukraine. In, a very short period of time before the war broke out, the first time in Ukraine and Russia, the first time when the war broke out, the barons in Russia want, wanted to know how Stalin was going to support all of these things and do all of these things and still maintain the joy of uh, being the leader of, of, the, of Russia. And what he did, he invited most of the barons in. And when the barons came in, he had them sit down around a table, I presume, or maybe just a meeting. And you heard me use this example before, but it, become, but it becomes a, for us to actually use it again. You see, he brought, brought all of the barons in. And then he did something that uh, will ever stick in my mind when I first read it. And then he had somebody open the door where they were sitting in a room that was rather large. And he used as an example a chicken that they brought in from the, from the outside. And he said, you want to know how I can control our country? And they all said, yeah, how are you going to do that? And he reached in his pocket and held seeds. But before he did that, he actually took that chicken and pulled all the feathers out. Now, I don't know whether you or her pulled the feathers out of your spouse or somebody else, so to speak, but you see, he pulled all the, the uh, feathers out. And there was an excruciating pain. And 
Stop. He said, yeah, now what are you going to do because they ran away? He said, watch. And he took the, re the seeds that he had in his pocket and he reached into his pocket and, and called the chicken and the seeds were there and immediately the chicken came and said, that's how I'm going to control. Now that's evil. That's the kind of evil, evil that we need to recognize in our own lives. And if you're sitting there saying, well, I would never do anything like that, that's probably true. But I challenge you to think whether, in fact, you will do evil as equal as uh, that. Then, a little closer to home, let me try to end another example. More, hits home more, and that is my brother-in-law. I'm not saying he's evil, evil although his sister might have but anyway, um, here we are. We don't th like to think of ourselves as evil, and rightly so. But we actually have within us the capacity to be evil. For example, another brother-in-law, he uh, was a piano pianist, concert pianist. And he was caught by the Russians, so many of the German soldiers were. And when he, when it was discovered that he was a pianist, they decided that they were going to play some games with him. And I don't mean the kind of games that we find on TV or even around our home table dreadful games. They knew that he was a pianist, but they also knew that as a pianist, you need your index finger. And so they brought him in and told him that they were going to have to amputate his index finger. Why? Because they thought that if they could only get to his real love in life and get rid of that, that he would no longer object to the, to the, to the uh, times when he was uh, a pianist, or no longer, if he no longer had his, his finger. Now, I didn't know that, but you can apparently play the, P, play the organ much more easily when you're an organist can he play a piano more easily than the other way around? But they amputated his finger so that the, he would no longer have the, an excuse to shoot a rifle when they pulled him and sold him, so to speak, to the concentration camps, because those were slavery camps in so many words. There's another story. You can just for a moment reflect with me. And this suggests to me a very difficult, a very difficult uh, time when we so often forget what grace is always, what grace is like. And this is about a woman. Her name was Frau, that's a general name, but she herself was their person of war, cannot handle. And then something happened. Her children, she had two children, and her husband were separated from the rest of the family. 
and they wanted to keep the family together. They wanted to keep the family together because there was so much danger in being by yourself, especially a mother and children. And so she was actually arrested by the Russians as they were trying to gain food for their meals. And this all occurred in the Ukraine, interestingly enough. And Frau actually said, I can risk anything as long as I have my children. So they all went out and searched day after day. And finally, one of the guards who knew of her interest in being there and being in alone and wanting her husband together, wanting her children together. One of the guards said to her, you know, I think I can make an arrangement that if you sleep with me, you will then, I will then make it possible for you to be joined with your, parent, with your husband and, and waiting child. First, the wife didn't want to do it. But then, as the time came clearer that Russia was going to win, but still was in battle, what happened? Her resolve weakened, and she agreed to sleep with him. You all know the euphemism. I don't have to go into that. Do I? But you all can't just believe it, can you? The, the uh, wife, Frau Bergmeier, actually then agreed to sleep with him. And she got pregnant. And true to his word, the guards sent her home. Now the question is, what is going to happen when the husband finds out what happened here was sinful. The question is, each of the children had to answer. Should we allow, and the little boy was named Dito, said, should we allow a child that was conceived in this way to be a member of our church, to be baptized? And the congregation couldn't answer yes or no. As a congregation, they were willing to take that possibility and say, yes, we'll, we'll welcome a little Dito. But on the other hand, there were some that said, it is so important that we do not show a sinful side to the people of God in the congregation in Berlin where this all took place. I don't know what happened. But how would you vote? How would you vote? If you were a woman would you, or a mother, would you take it upon yourself to bring little Dita home? After all, sin isn't that bad. Sin isn't all that bad. Or if you were the husband who was waiting and then discovers that his wife, so to speak, was unfaithful. You see the kind of evil we're talking about? Do you see the real danger that we run into when we ourselves establish who we are and whom we're going to listen to when it comes to the different ethical issues which our Lord has laid down for us. How many men here would welcome your wife? How many women would have gone the length that she had to go?
Don't throw the can, don't throw the question away. Talk about it. And what, what was the underlying issue here? Amen. Let us continue with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, and God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. <clears throat> for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. You will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead, and life for the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses against us, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.